listening to you're listening to you are listening you're listening to Kenny you're listening you're listening to active fm to active fm to active fm fm to active fm so we're going to get straight into it it's dr dr alec hey that's correct yes all right so please introduce yourself to our listeners so we are obviously on active fm so if you can just introduce uh, yourself to our listeners and just tell us what you do. Okay. Um, well, I, I'm Dr. Alec Nikolic. I'm based in Cape Town. I have a medical cosmetic practice. We basically focus on, on the non-surgical cosmetic treatments. Okay. Um, and that's pre- predominantly Botox, dermal fillers, yes. lasers, chemical peels, dermapen, etc. Um, I also own a online skincare store called Skin Miles. Um, we started Skin Miles about five, six years ago with six skincare brands. Now we have uh, almost 90 uh, skincare wow. brands online. Sure. Um, and it's also extended to, to supply makeup as well. Yes. And I've also started my, my own uh, skincare range called Skin, SK dot IN, which stands for oh. Skin Ingredients. Oh, yes. Oh, my word. That is so exciting. I'm trying to like hold myself. (laughs) (laughs) So what are some of the common misunderstandings when it comes to male skincare? Because obviously that's what this whole skin miles is about. Because I mean, just initially, I think men don't care about their skin. Why would we even focus on that? So what are some of the common misunderstandings when it comes to that? Yeah, I think, you know, it's quite interesting um, that you asked me that. When we first started Skin Miles, we hardly ever saw a, a male purchase skincare. Yeah. And that definitely over the years has slowly increased. And I would say currently now we are close to about 18% of all skincare purchases are done by men. Sure. While five or six years ago, it was sitting down at close to 1%. And I, I, so I think that still there's room uh, for growth. And yeah. I, I believe that the misconceptions from men generally stem from that they don't need it or that's mm-hmm. something just that women do. Yeah. You know, so that's the first thing. And I think the other thing that might stop men is the confusion around the skincare, like what one should use. Yeah. And I think the third could be that men feel... Um, that it's too complicated. You know, it's the, you, when you, some, some women, if you see, they've got an array of products on their yes. bathroom, um, <laughs> you know, and, and it doesn't really have to be like that. It's, it's, it's can, can be a very simple uh, process uh, yeah. for everyone, not just for men. Um, so I think those are the three, for me, the biggest mis- misconceptions that men may have. All right. So if I was a man, I was like, okay, I'm going to try this thing. What is the, minimal like the absolute minimum product that you'd give me and say okay this is what you start with and already you're going on to something effective some, something i can look at something i can say hey this has made a difference and it's not like we said the whole regime with now 70 hundred products and things like that but just like three products or one product that will have me good to go okay look one product is going to be difficult but okay um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you know when it comes uh, your number one and it, it's irrespective whether it's a male or a female skin yeah. um your number one product should be sun protection a sunscreen yeah. and um b- because very simply the uv rays is the number one enemy for our skin it's the it will cause the greatest degree of damage yeah. from you know, from an aging perspective, but also in the, the risk of potentially developing cancer. So if if I was going to give advice to someone and they say, I only want to use one product, I'd say sunscreen. And, okay. and that's it, you know, because yeah. for me, that, that, that is the most important. But following that, if someone says, well, you know, I want a little bit more, uh, I would say the real basics would be to look at a cleanser and a moisturizer and a moisturizer that you can use both day and night. And, and that really simplifies the whole process for most people. The important thing to remember is that your skincare products should be for your skin type. And so very simply, if you suffer from dry skin, yeah. one shouldn't go get a cleanser and a moisturizer that's for normal or combination or for oily skin. It yeah. should be specifically indicated for that skin type. And so for me, that is your basic, is your yeah. SPF, your sunscreen, uh, a cleanser, and a moisturizer that can double up for both day and night. 
Sure, that's awesome. Now, when you started with the sunscreen, and even I'm thinking this, do you know what I'm saying? Would you say that sunscreen is for both black and white people? Because there's a misconception, obviously, that, you know, black people don't need sunscreen because their skin, you know, is fine and we're not susceptible to cancer or any of those things. What would you say to that? Because even now, there's still a lot of people that think like that. Yeah, sure. I mean, and a hundred percent, the darker the skin type, the greater the degree of natural protection yeah. against UV damage. And, and so from that perspective, it's not necessary. However, darker skin types suffer from other problems um, and in particular hyperpigmentation. Yeah. So mild degrees of inflammation on the skin when exposed to the sun can produce quite dark marks. And that overproduction uh, of melanin is a natural uh, response. And so by using something like sunscreen, you reduce that, that um, uh, production of that melanin or pigment yeah. uh, in the cell. Um, but, you know, I, I think generally irrespective of, of uh, skin color, the other yeah. potential concern is that there is damage that has been shown to take place with um, light that is invisible, such as from our uh, screens, laptop, you know, laptop screens and mobile screens, etc. Uh, and a lot of the good quality SPFs today contain ingredients to help protect our skin uh, yeah. from the, those lights as well. So it's not just from the sun. Okay, so when men are looking at skincare what main ingredients should they be looking for you know we know now you know like you've just said if uh, my, my skin um product has spf this then i'm like yeah good to go i can buy that but what active ingredients should a man be looking for if he picks up so, a product for his skin and says okay this is good to go i guess sure so you know i think that you know when it comes to an, an spf that yeah. what we should be using an spf with 30 or more Mm -hmm. And it should should contain uh, zinc uh, um, or titanium dioxide. It's one of those yeah. two, um, and that is a really good basis for any type of sun uh, sun protection uh, for for most most men, male skin. Yeah. When it comes to a moisturizer, for me, it's important that the moisturizer contains glycerin, which is a great humectant or a moisturizer, and that it also contains hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is an ingredient that helps to bind to water and it helps to give the skin a smooth and a hydrated appearance. And so there are multiple different ingredients that one can find in a moisturizer. But for me, those are the two most important. And then following that, I would also be looking at moisturizers that contain things like ceramides and fatty acids, because those are very important to look after our skin barrier. Our skin barrier is like an outer protective layer. Yeah. And really controls everything that happens with the skin. It stops bad uh, microorganisms entering. Uh, it helps to prevent water loss. Uh, it basically gives us that glow and healthy, uh, hydrated kind of look. And so those ingredients uh, will really look after the skin nicely. You know, yeah. if you want to take it a step further and you want to say, well, which which ingredients should I to try and help with any wrinkles, to help smooth my skin, to help with pigment? I would then look at a vitamin C serum in the morning, as yeah. well as a retinol or a vitamin A serum at night. Sure, okay. I'm like, I wanna talk now about ladies. I'm like, and for gold, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> so what in terms of brands would you recommend for a man that is starting this journey? You know, there's quite a few options available. And what's interesting is that, you know, up to now, Male skin has been predominant. Male skin care has been predominantly, um, almost like shunned to the side. And yeah. as it's become more and more popular, brands have woken up and and have generated skin care specific for men. It's yeah. not that there's a difference between, or should I say, a massive difference between men and, and female in their in their skin. Uh, there's a slight difference. Yeah. So men can actually use the same product that a woman uses as long as it's for their skin type. Yeah. But in answer, you know, to, to, to some inexpensive approaches or brands, um, I would look at something like Jack Black. That's a re that nice brand that has, does have those particular ingredients that I've mentioned. Yeah. Then there's another nice brand, which is not uh, too expensive um, is the, the London grooming club and um, another one I'm just trying to think off the top of my head is a, a brand called Red Dane 
So those are all male specific uh, skincare brands, yeah. um, but have the same kind of ingredients that you would find generally that, that a, a female would be using in, in her, her skincare. Sure, okay. And I didn't, so you're not mentioning any of your brands, you know, slipping it in there like this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, you, you said that's inexpensive, you know, unfortunately, oh, okay. the, the, the serums, yeah, that that skin does are on the more um, expensive side, unfortunately, oh, okay. but in, in that range, there, yeah. there is one that there's a serum that, that, that I kind of made it for my skin. I was, I'm very much like a typical guy. I want to use one thing and yeah. one thing only. And uh, I developed a, a serum called Skin Bounce. And um, in it, it has the hyaluronic acid, the ceramides, uh, the fatty acids, it has the vitamin C and it has the retinol. So you can yeah. kind of put it on and you get it Good all in go. one go. Um, yeah. But yeah, so that, that, and that actually has done fairly, fairly well yeah. because it also helps a lot with uh, pigmentation. But uh, uh, if one is looking for a one kind of stop um, product, the, that, that's a good one. Sure, no, it sounds amazing. And I see your skin is looking like your skin talk. I'm like, mm -hmm, I would definitely. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, before we finish, is there anything, do you want to tell us more about the whole thing with moles and what people should look out for? Because I think people just think a mole is a mole and then it's just like, mm, but what should people be looking out for, you know, when it yeah. comes to moles and things like that? Sure, I mean, moles, yeah, they, they can be confusing because they vary in color. Moles yeah. are like darker kind of skin lesions and they can vary from quite black to almost a dark brown color. Um, and generally, they tend to either appear soon after birth or much later on in life. And the important thing to remember is if they've developed very early on in life, they are more likely to turn into becoming cancerous. And so one should give special attention to those versus those that happen, let's say, after we're 25 or so, they appear much later on in life. Then moles, um, I think the easiest way for a lay person is if, if they're ever not sure about a mole is to immediately see a dermatologist and had to have it checked. But an easier way to remember um, what to look out for is what we term the ABCDE of moles. And the A stands for asymmetry. So if one part of the mole or one half looks different to the other side, that's a warning side. Okay. Uh, then the B stands for the border. So if the border of the mole is completely smooth, there's no irregularities, there's nothing to worry about. But if it suddenly changes, it shoots out, or there's an irregularity, um, then that also definitely is a concern. Then um, the C stands for color. So if there isn't a, a, it's not a uniform color all the way through, there's darker areas and lighter areas or speckles of darkness or lightness, then one should also um, um, see the dermatologist. And then there's also things, um, sorry, and then there's the D stands for the diameter. And a very easy one to remember there is if the, um, diameter of the mole is bigger than more or less, let's say the rubber on the end of a pencil. Yes, then okay. if it starts getting bigger than that, I would also go see the dermatologist. And then the last one, the E stands for evolution, any kind of change that, that yes. the person notices. And that includes if it starts itching or if it bleeds or um, you, you know becomes painful or tender, um, th those are your warning signs. Yeah. Sure, that's so interesting. Who knew that the ABCDE could be so informative? Uh, just to end off, you know, I want to hold you from your appointment. Is there anything else um, that you would want to add, you know, to make men or not even just men, but everybody more aware and to actually take care of their skin? Because sometimes, you know, like when you're speaking, we think it's only women and things like that. What benefits or what is there that people should know um, about their skin that people are, all of the time are overlooking? Yeah, I think that, you know, I think that the important thing is that that men should take off to the, uh, look after their skin um, because unfortunately we also age. And, you know, to, with today's modern life and society, we eat healthy, we exercise, we look after ourselves. And as we get older, um, we we feel good, you know, we'll, yeah. we feel great. But one day we'll be looking in the mirror and what how we feel, 
feel is not how we look in the mirror. Yes. And so <laughs> it should be seen as an investment for, for, for yeah. that future is to, you know, if we can have glowy, healthy looking skin um, into our 30s, 40s, and even our 50s or later, uh, I think it goes a long way. And, you know, it's a lot of studies that have been done and yeah. have shown that if we look good on the outside, we feel better on the inside. And and that has a positive impact in emotions, in confidence, in how we approach people. Um, so, yeah, I think men uh, just do it. Uh, invest in some skincare. Look after your skin. And it's the most important, one of the most important organs of our body. And it's, it's, it's there for our, for our whole life. So we, we should really look after it. Sure. No, that is amazing. I've learned so much and I'm already a girl and already taking care of my skin. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Alec. It's, I am definitely going to take into account the ABCDE of moles now because it's just been like, oh, well, the mole is a mole. So thank you very much about learning. And I'm sure there's so many guys that are actually going to start taking care. I've got two guys in the room that are helping me with the technical side. Uh, they're looking very impressed. They are definitely going to start taking care of their skin. So thank you very much for your time. And we really appreciate Thank you. Absolute pleasure. All right. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's an absolute pleasure. All right. Then. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. bye.